What's going on everyone? We're back to work on the Samurai. And today we're chopping off even more Samurai. It's gonna be a long and dirty day. We gotta tear all of these old leaf spring hangers off and mounts and bump stops. Basically everything we no longer need. I wanna get this frame pretty bare. Now what that's gonna do is allow us to design some link mounts. We'll cut it on the plasma table and then we'll jam them in here and start tacking them some things together. That'll likely be the next video. And if you haven't seen our previous two videos, make sure you check them out. I'll put one over here and I'll put one over here. And that's where we put in the PVC links, as well as we bring the Samurai in the shop and do the initial teardown. So without that, let's focus on today where we get a clean slate to start making our link mounts and let's get going. Since I'm going to be welding a bunch of brackets on this frame, I'm also going to be rerouting the brake lines and the gas tank. I figured I should just tear off all of these other lines that are existing here. So that's what I've gone ahead and done, ripped off a bunch of the brackets, and now I'm just going to go ahead and pull these lines out. Well guys, we got all the cutting and grinding done. I know that was a lot. We spent hours and hours, blades and blades, discs and discs, trying to get every last piece of Samurai off of here. But now that's done, what that means is that from here on out, it's only new content. It's only new pieces added onto the Samurai. It's design work, it's CNC plasma cutting work, and it's assembling links. So I could not be more excited for this because this is where the real fun happens. And this is where we get to be creative and start building and assembling. So the last topic for today's video is going to be looking at all the room that we created for ourselves and trying to figure out where we can position all these links to be able to start designing brackets and SolidWorks and pushing out our next video to you guys of actually putting together these link mounts. So let's get to it. Let's get under the Samurai. Let's pull some measurements and let's put these into the four link calculator to just do a quick sanity check before we start cutting pieces. Let's get going.
All right, so I want to stop and give you guys a quick overview of the options that I had when designing the rear suspension and the ideas that I was putting forward when trying to do some of these measurements. Now, the big problem with Lynx typically is always packages, packaging, as I'm sure you're aware. So I've already stripped out the gas tank. I've also torn out my drive shaft. I've removed all the brake and fuel lines off the rails, and I cut off any tabs that were left over from the old suspension. So I have about as clean of a slate as I can possibly get without chopping off my frame and doing a tube rear end. So I was pretty close to doing that, but it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna use the stock Samurai frame and let's dive into some of these reasons. So I've got three options on the board here. We don't have any fancy whiteboards here, so you're getting plywood. So in blue, you can see the Samurai axle. In black, we have the frame rails. And then in red, we have the different links. So with option number one, the outer lower links, we're going to the outside of the frame rail on the Samurai. And then the upper links are going to the inside rail of the Samurai. In option two, we have them both going on the inside rails. Option three is a double triangulated where there would be a new cross member right in the center for the lower links, which would allow us to have the same angles on our upper links and lower links. So when we look at option one, the downside of this one was the triangulation. So ideally you wanna have 20% triangulation between your rear links to stop the axle movement from side to side. Otherwise you'd need some sort of uh, pan hard bar and a three link setup if you couldn't get that triangulation. So with this one, I had about 13 degrees on the upper links and then about 11 degrees on the lower links. So in combination, that was due equal over 20 degrees each and 40 degrees total. But I wasn't confident enough that this is enough triangulation. And I don't have enough, enough experience to say whether it's good or not. Option two attempts to try to get more triangulation on the lower links. So that pushes this lower link inside the frame rails to try to combat that axle movement side to side. Now, some of the complications that I had was with option three, I have a transfer case that's offset. So the offset Samurai transfer case gets right in the way and running my drive shaft would collide with my upper link and my lower link here. So this one was quickly ruled out because it's just not going to be possible with that drive line angle. And I mean, this is exactly why I did the PVC links. So I was able to set up all three of these configurations and I was able to quickly understand which ones would work and which ones would not. It gave me a really good visual understanding of how these links are going to sit within the Samurai and what, what kind of packaging issues we're going to have. So with the PVC links, I was able to confirm that this lower link would not collide with the frame rail on compression. I ended up mocking up a four inch compression for the rear axle, and we do have enough clearance on that frame rail. So I'm not going to have to notch it and I'm not going to have to relocate it. We can leave the Samurai frame exactly as it is and we can push forward with option number two. So the center of gravity for the Samurai, I've estimated to be about 32 or 33 inches from the floor. And then with this configuration, I wanna to try to keep my roll center at least within three quarters of that. So probably between 25 inches up to 33 inches, somewhere in there. And that's gonna have this not be too tippy when I'm out on the trail. I'm also going to be aiming for an anti-squat between about 70 and 90%. But what I'm going to do when I design these link mounts is I'm going to put multiple holes in them so that I can adjust them on the trail and I can get an understanding of what different values of anti-squat feel like because I don't really have a good ballpark of what I want because I just haven't had a suspension that I can tune and really dial in for the type of terrain that we drive. So that's going to be something that evolves over time. If I have to rebuild a mount in the future, that's the beauty of having a CNC plasma table. I can chop it off and redesign it. I'm also gonna be using rod ends with left-hand thread and right-hand thread. So I can quickly lengthen or shorten that link if I wanna move between different holes on the mounts that I'm building. So I think that's enough of my plywood whiteboard talk. And what we're gonna do is now get some measurements of these locations for option number two. We're gonna plug them into the calculator and then that's gonna be the end of this video so that I can get going on some design and SolidWorks for you guys on the next video.
What's going on guys? We're now in the office, we're out of the shop, and we're plugging some numbers into this four link calculator. This is version number four of the four link calculator from Busted Knuckle Off Road. On the left hand side, I have option number two. This is the one we're gonna go forward with. Right hand side is option number one. Now I put both of these in here just to get an understanding of how drastic of a change it's gonna be between the two geometries. Because honestly, I'm probably gonna build the mounts for both options. So I can switch between the two and understand the differences between them. So for both of these, we're sitting at an anti-squat of about 82%. Our roll center is at 28 inches, where our CG is going to be at 33. So within that three-quarter inch, we're sort of that three-quarter percent of our of our center of gravity. And then our roll axis on option number two is actually worse than option number one. So what we're moving forward with might give us a little bit too much rear steer. But like I said, I'm still going to build the mounts for the second, for the first option. Uh, we can always swap them out there and see the behavior difference. I'm not sure I'm really going to notice the difference, but who knows, maybe we will. Now, my next step is going to be putting all of this into SolidWorks. I'm going to cycle the suspension there, and I'm going to start designing these link mounts. That's going to be coming at you guys for the next video, so be sure to watch out for that. And also remember, we have two other build videos within this series, as well as a whole separate series with the TDI Toyota Rock Crawler that Nigel is running on the channel. So make sure you check those out if you haven't already. Otherwise, this marks the end of this video. And if you like what you see, we really appreciate it if you like, comment, or subscribe. And we'll look out for the next one. See you guys later.